This video is brought to you by Stadium Live. I know a lot of you have been waiting for my annual roast of the Houston Rockets, right? It's it's that time of the year. Well, it's not that time of the year because, you know, the bubble and all that. But it's uh, it's an annual event of like, up, oh, up, oh, what happened, James? What happened, Houston? What's going down, right? And you're probably thinking, well, this is due. Right? Like, why, why did you, you'd expect this within 24 hours of them boys getting knocked out, right? No. You know, I don't know, I don't know at what point this happened, but somewhere this season, I started to feel bad for James Harden. If you noticed, I haven't, his name hasn't come out of my mouth much in my content this season. Because, you know, I don't want to be a bully. I don't want to be a bully. When something's obvious and it is what it is, I don't want to beat a dead horse. Right. And I think it's an obvious scenario and situation with Houston and, and James Harden. And I used to take a lot of joy in watching uh, the believers hopes get crushed. And may maybe it's 2020. Maybe it's 2020 that softened alchemy. Right. And, and, and given me some more empathy because watching them get knocked out and Harden in the same old thing. I just I wasn't here for it, man. It, it just. It is what it is, right? Yeah, come on, man. Come on, man. You you know, you know I'm gonna get him. You know I'm gonna get him. But let's discuss why. Let's discuss why. Let's get into the details of it. Human beings, we've all heard this term. When you're in a stressful or dangerous situation, what are your two options? Fight or flight. Fight or flight. We know what James Harden does. We know what James Harden does, right? It's flight every time. Every time the lights get bright and it, when push comes to shove and it's time to win the game, the series, it's flight. It's not just flight. It's Denzel in flight, right? Like he never mind landing safely. He crashing the plane. He want nothing to do with it, right? Let me, let me explain. Let me explain further and why it's so unacceptable in particular for James Harden. Superstars have superpowers, essentially. And it's usually a combination of traits that gives them a superpower. Sometimes it's just one, but like even Steph Curry, you say, all right, well, Steph's superpower is obviously his shooting, but there's also his leadership and his charisma that elevate players around him so it's a package it's a package thing Giannis his superpower is his length his strength and his speed his motor right you package that and that's his superpower and that's why he plays so fast and hard that's his superpower LeBron's it's a combination of strength IQ vision right his frame and all that um, so you can go down the line and, and, and it's pretty obvious what each superstar superpower is James Harden's superpower is scoring you know, we are in a juiced era, a three ball era of basketball, but say what you want. He is the most prolific scorer of this era, of this generation. And his superpower is scoring, whether it be the step back or his ability to draw fouls and get to the line. We've never seen anything like it, right? Game six in San Antonio, game seven in Golden State, where that was even in Houston, man. Anyway, you can point to numerous occasions this is no longer a small sample size but late in games when the series is on the line when the season is on the line all of a sudden james harden doesn't want to use his superpower it's flight he doesn't want to fight that's what's inside of him and it's blatant it's obvious there's nothing to argue about right and so it is what it is man it is what it is uh I don't, I don't have a whole, I, I was joking, obviously, like feeling bad, I don't, but at this point, I have nothing more to say. I don't want to beat a dead horse. He's a certified loser when it comes to that. Now, once he gets off this contract and maybe on a different environment and a different role, he can win. But what they've asked him to do and what they've built that around in Houston, that's what makes it so unacceptable. I, I almost forgot to hit home the main point on this because, because that's all James Harden does, basically that he brings to the table is his scoring that makes it even more unacceptable that he 
doesn't want the ball and he stops trying to do it, never mind failing at doing it. We're not talking about Kobe going six for 30, right? He literally is like, here, you have it. And that's so unacceptable when you consider that's really all he does. Giannis doesn't want the ball late, fine. You're still the defensive player of the year. Early in LeBron's career, he was criticized because he didn't want to take the last shot, right? But he still orchestrated the offense and ran everything, set the table. These other superstars, they can do other things that contribute. But Harden, if he doesn't want the ball late, what good is he? He might as well not even be on the floor. And so that's why you've, you know, a lot of people feel like this is the end of the Houston Rockets and the end of this experiment. You know, I think they came into the bubble, they looked strong, they were playing better defense than any other team in that bubble. And we all were kind of raised our brow at that game one against the Lakers. But in hindsight, was that really just the fact that the Lakers had seven days off in the bubble and they were a step slow and they, they were too relaxed, right? There's always that, that argument of rust versus rest. And I think that's what we saw in that game one because it wasn't just seven days off. It was seven or eight days off in the bubble. And I would imagine that that probably feels like something like two weeks because it's like this resort environment, right? It, each day is longer than, than a normal, you know, a real world day. So that probably felt like two weeks off. Houston came out and it looked like in game one, like, oh shit, they can't stop anybody. Talking about the Lakers, right? And then they, they dialed in and we found out what's what. And I think you saw Houston give up and fold and have less fight than we've even seen in the past because from the beginning of this micro ball experiment in, in March or whenever that was that they traded Capella, they were skeptical, right? I don't think the Rocket players truly believed that they could win this way. And so once shit started going bad, you saw them fold and give in much quicker than the Chris Paul Capella version of these Rockets where that team actually thought they could win. So therefore there was more fight. Now, you know, you know what the Rockets were? You know, you know what, you know what happens when, when you, you're riding a bucket and it finally breaks down, right? What do you do? You piece out the parts. Now you may say, well, the Rockets ain't no bucket. Perennial playoff team, perennial contenders, the team that pushed the super team warriors to the brink, right? Okay, fine, fine, Houston. Let me, let me give y'all some credit, right? Have you ever seen a fake sports car, a Fugazi? I, I'm serious, they make them. They look like a Ferrari or a Maserati, the frame. But if you pop the, the trunk or the hood, right? It's like a Nissan engine. It's a, I forget what you call it. It's like a replica. I remember this kid at my high school had one. It was like, I don't know, man. It just, they don't feel safe. If you ever sit in one, it, it doesn't feel right. Low to the ground and shit anyway. That's what they were. They're no bucket, right? But they were a knockoff exotic car because when push came to shove, they didn't perform like one. That's really what it was. So the car's broken down. The Fugazi's broken down. It's time to piece out the parts. You're not gonna get rid of Russ. You're not gonna get rid of Hart, right? Not until there's some of those years come off those deals. So the only thing you can do is piece off the smaller parts, right? You can't get rid of the engine, but what else, what else is of value? And I think that's the more interesting discussion. I, I don't really have, uh, I don't think there's any more to say. It's not a winning formula. James Harden is not a winning player, not in this role. But what about P.J. Tucker? What about Eric Gordon? Robert Covington? I think it starts with Daryl Morey. Is Daryl Morey out? Dan Tony couldn't wait to, Dar Dan Tony had his shit packed, right? Is he gonna go to Philly, Indiana? I'm, I'm curious about that as well, but who comes in? Who is making these decisions? Because I don't know if it's gonna be Daryl Morey. And a lot of the time when you see a very controversial uh, organization and how they do things, and when they get rid of the guy that's been doing those things, they usually let the pendulum swing all the way to the other side. So are they gonna bring in a, a old school traditionalist? Are they gonna get rid of Morey Ball and, and let it swing all the way to the other side? Go get a big man and go play traditional basketball. The Lakers, they were too big, they were you know, too strong, we need a big. And so whoever takes that spot, and if that happens, I think that's gonna determine a lot of the moves that are made. But let me ask y'all this. For your team, what are you willing to give up for a P.J. Tucker? 
he's 35, 36, I don't know how much more is left in the tank, but then you could push back and say he's such a unique dude, right? He's so strong and he's like, uh, he's like Ray Lewis, right? He's like Ray Lewis in those final years where, yeah, he's not a physical specimen or anything like that. He's just strong and smart and he knows where to be and he's tough. He's doing it, he's doing it with the toughness and the IQ. So if, I feel like he still holds value, but are, would you be willing to give up, say a lottery pick for PJ Tucker? Or maybe like a second year, like a like a Marvin Bagley for PJ Tucker? I don't know, I don't know the answer. And then Eric Gordon, look, when he's healthy, Eric Gordon is a fringe all-star. But if he's healthy, when's he healthy? When's he healthy? It's his built. He's built like a football player. He's so explosive. He's just, he's going to be injury prone. He is what he is. Robert Covington, I think that's another guy that teams are gonna try to poach. So I'm just very interested to see how they reconstruct the ancillary parts around Russ and Harden. But I think the micro ball experiment is over. I think Daryl Morey's run is over. Dan Tony's out of there. I think we're gonna see them go in a completely different direction. And I'd be very interested to see James Harden being asked less of him. Or I, I, no, I take that back. Not being asked less, being asked to do different things. Hart, James, we only need 20 from you a game, but we need you to defend and we need you to create. Just in a different role. Just do it in a different system, in a different role. Not this ISO spread it out ball. Because, hey, like James has the talent. He's as talented as any of these guys. He is a superstar, right? But there's the environment, and what they've built around him and asked him to do. He's not cut for that. He's not cut for that. And that's very clear. So, yeah, that's my Houston Rockets uh, purgatory for the 2020 bubble. As always, man, hit that like, share, and subscribe. I'm out, y'all.